In this study, we want to look at the learning curve for the MitraClip procedure. Uh, MitraClip is, of course, a procedure to treat mitral regurgitation. It's a new procedure approved in the United States in 2013, and it's a relatively complex procedure where operators have to navigate both the right and left atria, the mitral valve itself, and the left uh, ventricle. We haven't really fully characterized what level of training or experience is needed to um, achieve optimal outcomes with the procedure, and that was the goal of this analysis. So we use data from the TVT registry, which is a nationwide um, registry that it really captures almost all patients treated with MitraClip in the United States. And we looked at the years 2013, when MitraClip was approved through 2018, and we uh, were able to analyze almost 15,000 procedures. So the main findings are uh, that if you look at an outcome of acceptable procedural success, where the goal is just to get from severe mitral regurgitation to moderate or less mitral regurgitation, the learning curve for the procedure is actually relatively flat. Even in the early operator experience, procedural success is very high, greater than 90%. And although there is some improvement in procedural success with increasing operator case experience, the actual improvements are relatively small numerically. But if you look at an outcome of optimal procedural success, where the goal is to get to mild or less residual mitral regurgitation, then the learning curve is quite steep. In the early operator experience, procedural success is only about 60%, and it increases to about 70% after 50 cases and to about 80% after 150 cases. There's an inflection point in that learning curve at about 50 cases, but outcomes continue to improve out to 200 cases, which means that the duration of the learning curve is perhaps longer than many would expect. We also looked at uh, outcomes of procedure time, which also does decrease with increasing operator experience, and procedural complications, which also decrease with increasing operator experience. These are really important data because uh, operators need to understand the learning curve uh, for a procedure and where they stand on that learning curve. Now, one of the interesting things about MitraClip is that it's a two-person procedure. It's a two-operator procedure. And when we did this analysis, the way we did it is that if you had two operators doing a given procedure, we categorized the case based on the experience of the operator who had the most cases uh, of experience at that point. And so what it means is that one of the easiest um, ways to achieve good outcomes with the procedure, optimal outcomes with the procedure, would be to pair a less experienced operator with a more experienced operator if that's available. The other uh, way to achieve uh, you know, optimal outcomes would be for the less experienced operator simply to understand that if they are in the early part of the learning curve, that they should perhaps pay more attention to appropriate case selection, or even to refer more complex cases uh, to a site or an operator that does have more experience. And then when they're further along on that learning curve, then they could take on uh, perhaps the more complex cases themselves. Yeah, absolutely. So that, you know, we still need to learn more about uh, MitraClip and the learning curve because it will change as time goes on. And so even between 2013 and now, there have been device modifications uh, that we couldn't fully account for in this analysis. But as uh, the, the base of knowledge in the community grows, hopefully outcomes will improve. As the MitraClip is um, modified over time, uh, hopefully for ease of use and better outcomes, the learning curve may change. And so this is the type of thing that, um, you know, uh, defines the learning curve now in you know 2019, but uh, you know we we may need to reevaluate the learning curve in the future.